Canadian wildfire smoke is blanketing major cities here in Canada and across the border into the United States. The big smoke, for example, tonight is exactly that. Toronto is the city with the worst air quality in the entire world right now, and winds are pulling that blanket of smoke south. Take a look at the skyline in Chicago. And Environment Canada is warning with 482 active wildfires burning, there's no guarantee the smoke stops anytime soon. As long as the fires are burning and the smoke is in the atmosphere, it's going to be a concern, not just for Canadians, but as you say, for Americans as well. Uh, it's going to be, uh, depending on the winds uh, shifting, so the smoke is still in the air, but as those winds shift, it will uh, bring the smoke towards certain areas, and then the smoke may leave or uh, remain in place for several days. So it's really uh, to be seen how long it will be affecting everybody uh, over the summer, as long as those conditions remain in place. Addressing the smoke and wildfires is about both mitigating the effects of climate change and adapting to them. Can space be part of the solution? Astronaut Jeremy Hansen is set to represent Canada on NASA's next mission to the moon. Hi, Colonel Hansen. Great to see you again. Yeah, likewise. Thanks for having me. I know that you're headed to Canada, headed to Ottawa here specifically for Canada Day, and I'm going to ask you about that in a second. But I actually wanted to start it off, start off rather on a subject we've discussed before, and I know it's really significant throughout your career, and that's climate change. We've been covering here the extent to which wildfires are burning in Canada and impacting air quality really right across North America, even beyond the boundaries of North America. I'm wondering how worried you are about that. How much does that concern you? Yes, as a father of, of three children, we speak about this. Climate change is very concerning for me, and I see it as a you know global issue, uh, requires global solutions. And it's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about space exploration is because you know one of the benefits is that we have figured out how to collaborate. It's not perfect, you know, we, there's still room to grow that collaboration, but we are setting a really important example of the benefits of international collaboration. And so, for example, this Artemis II mission, you know, Canadian is joining three Americans to go back to the moon, first time in over 50 years. This is a significant visible example of what we can do when we set common goals and we work together to achieve them. And I, that is the only way you know, humanity survives on this planet in the future, is that we, we get on the same page with respect to the scientific facts around climate change, and we figure out how we're going to work together to address them. So concerned? Yes. Optimistic? I am very optimistic. I believe we can work together to find the solutions. It's interesting you flag cooperation. It reminds me of something when, the, when, you, when your mission was being announced that the head of NASA, Bill Nelson, told me in an interview, and that was that the cooperation with China, for example, in space is so different than the, the type of a relationship that's happening here on Earth, and that it kind of imparts sort of what you're saying, imparts the, the idea or imbues the idea that that level of cooperation, even with an adversary like China, is possible on an issue that is of, is as important as climate change. Do you do you do you have that sense, even with a country like China, for example? I, I absolutely agree that collaboration is the path forward, and it is possible. These relationships are strained. I think you know, probably the one that it stands out the most to us is you know right now as we're speaking, we have seven humans in space together on board the International Space Station. And some of them are cosmonauts from Russia. And that relationship is, and we're all aware, is very strained um, on the planet. But in space, we're just demonstrating that we can work together and we can do good things together. And when humanity is in the sense of creating solutions instead of tearing down, we can do amazing things. And so it's just important to remind ourselves that we have to set goals, we have to get in the creative space, and we have to believe that we're all as humans capable of doing that. We can never convince ourselves that any one um, country is evil. The people are good. What you have, you know, what we have are leadership challenges, um, not people challenges. What about the, uh, the impact space itself and space exploration can have, not just on mitigation of the effects of climate change, but I'm thinking in particular of what's happening with the wildfires and adaptation. Is there a role for space to play in helping us adapt to the new realities of the impact of climate change? Absolutely. So we're already observing Earth from space with many systems, and those systems are already helping us to fight fires, to identify fires and help us fight them, of course, see through. We have systems with radar sat that can see through smoke. 
uh, we're developing a new system called FireSat. This is amazing capability, a Canadian capability to contribute to early detection of fires, which is, is a huge adaptation tool for us in a world where we can't reverse these climate change effects and impacts, but we can adapt by getting better at identifying them earlier when we can control them. And so FireSat you know, is still years away, but it is a very innovative solution that is going to help us on that front. And it's just one example. And as the world comes to grips with the challenges of climate change, we don't all have to create and duplicate these systems. You know, what I explain to young engineers in the country is, if you have a problem, I would just ask you to consider, is there a way to solve this problem with space technology? Because if there is, you haven't created a regional solution, you've created a global solution. And so when we create FireSat, we do it with the intent of helping Canadians, but we're creating a global tool. And if we all contribute our global solutions together from around the world, then that is how you get to the point where you can really have tremendous impact. I've interviewed the ministers in this country who oversee the adaptation strategy, which includes FireSat, and they have left open the door to expediting the speed with which resources get deployed to uh, implement that adaptation strategy. I'm wondering from where you sit, if there were more resources attached to it, could the speed with which FireSat gets up and running be expedited or is does the process take the time it takes regardless of the money allotted to it? Yeah, unfortunately, I just don't have the details to, you know, to give you an educated answer on whether it is possible to expedite it or not. Sorry. No worries. Um, why don't I turn then to uh, when, what you're going to be coming here to Canada to talk about, and that is, of course, the Artemis mission. You mentioned that. Uh, tell me a bit about your message when you do come for Canada Day. <laughs> Excited to uh, you know to just be with my fellow Canadians. Yeah, I live and work down in Houston. I, you know I love the relationship we have with our American neighbors to the south and and working in this environment. But you know Canada Day is a chance to come home for me, and uh, I love coming back. I love being with Canadians and just celebrating the the greatness of Canada. And uh, for me, it's particularly poignant as I get to uh, point to this huge honor that has been bestowed on Canada. You know, not me as an individual, but on the country. You know, because of the visionary contributions of literally thousands of people over decades uh, in the space realm and bringing real real um, real contribution to an international partnership we've been invited to be the second country in the world to send a human into deep space this is a big deal and uh, and it's because of the greatness in our country it's because of the genius we have to offer the world and to reflect that back to canadians is really important to me and uh, but mostly to have them think about well if we can do this what can we do next? And I just see some really bright opportunities for us moving forward. Okay, Colonel Hansen, I'll leave it there. Look forward to seeing you in Ottawa. Happy Canada Day to you. Thank you. <laughs> Very happy Canada Day to you as well. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks so much.